Hello and welcome. My name is Alexander Marrera and today we're going to be discussing the problem ski slope. In this problem, we have a tree with n nodes representing a ski hill and each edge consists of two values, a difficulty rating and an enjoyment rating. In the example I have to the left here, the difficulty rating is listed first and the enjoyment rating is listed second. So for example, this particular run would have a difficulty rating of 70 and an enjoyment rating of 10. We say that a skier has a skill level of S and a courage level of C, and this means that a skier can travel on at most C edges with a difficulty rating above their skill level. So for example, if I had a skier with a skill level of 30, but a courage level of one, they would be able to descend down from seven to one, despite the fact that this run requires a skill level of 70 because again their courage rating of one would allow them to travel on one slope that has a difficulty rating above their skill level. And our goal here is for each skier we want to determine the maximum total enjoyment they can collect traveling from any node to the root. So if you were able to travel from let's say seven all the way down to node one you would encounter the difficulty ratings of 70, 30, and 20, and along the way you'd collect the enjoyment of 10 plus 5 plus 1 comes out to a total of 16. So uh, the first sort of key detail that we want to emphasize here is that for all skiers the courage is small. In particular it's a number between 0 and 10. And this is going to be very significant for the solutions that are available to us because we want to know sort of how much data do I have to store for each node. If I try to store all of the possible difficulty ratings from that node to the root node, I will probably run out of space quite quickly. So the fact that the courage here is small gives us some hope of being able to solve this problem. So key observation one, when C is zero, the only piece of information we need is the maximum difficulty rating of all paths because skiers are not allowed to travel on anything above their skill level. So if we know the maximum difficulty along the path, we can instantly tell if the skier is going to be able to travel that path or not. When C is one, we need the second maximum difficulty rating because we don't care what the highest level difficulty is. Given that the skier has a courage level of one, we can skip over that run for free, and we're only concerned with the second maximum difficulty. And when C is two, we need the third maximum difficulty, and so on. So all the way down to when C is 10, we will want the 11th maximum difficulty. So what this leads to is that for each node, we need to store the top 11 difficulty ratings. So rather than storing all possible difficulty ratings, we're just going to have an array for each node storing the 10 or the 11 highest difficulty ratings. And we can generate these lists via DFS from the root node. So we'll start at the root node, calculate the difficulty ratings for that, just all zero. You can always start at the root node. And then when we travel upwards, well, we'd encounter a new difficulty rating of 20 so that we'd add that to our list. When we travel upward again, we'd encounter a new difficulty rating and so on. So we can fill in all the necessary data for our nodes just by applying DFS. This brings us to our second key observation, which is that looping over all nodes for each skier is too slow. So one way of fixing this that is pretty common in Silver is we can sort all of the nodes from easiest to hardest, and we can sort all of the skiers from weakest to strongest in terms of their skill level. And then we can apply the two pointers technique to calculate the optimal enjoyment for each skier. So we just process the data in sorted order. Or at least we could, if not for one small problem. And that one small problem is that each node um, or the difficulty of each node depends on the courage level C. So there isn't sort of a strict sense of one node being easier or harder than another, independent of the value C. And to see an example of this, suppose C was zero, so you had no courage, that would mean 
a run with a difficulty of one and two would be easier than a single run with a difficulty of three. But instead, if the courage level was one, now this set would be easier because we get to ignore the maximum value and one is bigger than zero. So the difficulty of a node depends on the courage level. And this makes sorting the nodes a little bit problematic. To resolve this issue, what we can do is we can apply a separate sort of processing for each courage level. So we'll handle all of the skiers with courage level zero, then we'll handle all of the skiers with courage level one, then we'll handle all of the skiers with courage level two and so on, resorting the nodes each time we go on to the next batch of skiers. So far in the code, all I've done is read in the first portion of the input. So we've read in the number of nodes, and then we're going to store the node data in two arrays. The first is going to be nodes and the second edges. The nodes array is going to store the difficulty and enjoyment data for each node. So it starts off with the current difficulty and the current enjoyment rating of the node. And later we're going to fill in the top 11 difficulty ratings between that node and the root node. And we're also going to sum up all of the enjoyment ratings between that node and the root node. And then edges is simply going to store the relationships between nodes. You could combine this into one data structure if you prefer. Then we're ready to begin our DFS starting from the root node. So um, to do this, we are going to grab the current node and then we're going to loop over all of the children of that node. And we want to first copy all of the previous difficulty ratings. So uh, we're going to start with the root node, which has all difficulty ratings of zero. And then every time we see a new node with a new difficulty rating, we are going to add that new difficulty rating into the array of difficulty ratings. So this is going to start as an array of 11 values. When I add the next value, it's going to be 12 values. So I'm going to sort it from least to greatest and remove the first element from the array. This is equivalent to deleting the minimum difficulty rating. So it starts as 11 values. I add a new value to make it 12, sort it from least to greatest, and then remove the minimum one so it returns back to 11. And then finally, we need to add the new enjoyment um, to the total enjoyment. So uh, we're just going to increase this node's enjoyment rating by the previous enjoyment rating. So this is just a running sum of all of the enjoyments through the current path. And this is going to fill in the node's data structure. Once we're done that, we are ready to begin moving on to the skiers. So remember, the, the rough idea here is that we want to sort nodes from easiest to hardest, but that only makes sense for a particular courage rating. So we're going to group all of the skiers together by their courage rating. So that means I have to read the skiers in advance, and I'm going to separate them into 11 different groups based on their given courage rating. So I'm going to read in their skill level and their courage, and I'm going to add that skier to the correct courage group. Note for each skier, I'm storing both its skill level and ID so that later I can print out the skiers in the correct order. And then now I'm ready to do the final process here, which is sort the nodes, sort the skiers, and then apply two pointers technique to calculate the optimal enjoyment for each skier. So sorting the skiers is easy. That's just skiers cj dot sort. So this is going to make them uh, sorted from the sort of worst skiers to the best skiers. To sort the nodes, what we're going to want to do is we want to store the one plus CJ maximum difficulty of each node at the front. And then we can just sort it using a built-in sort function. If you're in a different language, then you probably have to write a custom sort function. So if you're in C++ or Java, you probably want to write your own custom comparator to, to do this for you. In Python, we can leverage the fact that the built-in sort function will sort arrays of arrays. Great. And then we have our pointer and our maximum. And we are just going to loop over all of the skiers in sorted order. While the pointer is less than n and 
the current difficulty rating is at most the current difficulty rating of the current skier. We're going to update maximum, and then we're going to increase pointer by one. When this is no longer true, maximum is going to store the sort of maximum enjoyment that the current skier can get. So we'll just update our output. And then at the end of the program, we'll print out our output. So the individual components here are quite simple. It's just DFS with an application of the two pointers technique. But putting all of the pieces together in the right order is definitely challenging. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone.